Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lion Turtle Podcast. I'm Sal, and joining me as always is my wife and the producer of the Lion Turtle Podcast, Christy. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey, so going into this episode, we want to start off, I think, by saying thanks for all the support. Yes, definitely. You guys gave us so much feedback and positive support that it really encouraged us to do another episode. All of your likes and comments on social media and even in person, uh, if you guys just told us that you yeah. really enjoyed the episode, we really appreciate it. I mean, it had me thinking all week. Like, man, I got, I'm like looking forward. I'm looking forward to this next episode. It's gonna be so good. But we have no idea what to talk about. But then we figured it out. Yeah. So I think this episode's gonna be pretty good. Um, a big question that we get from people, you know, uh, folks had been texting me like, "Hey, what card do you recommend I get?" All right, cool. That's that's a good question. And mm -hmm. so. What we're going to try and do in this episode is not necessarily tell you which specific card to get, but at least how to approach your research into different cards. Because everybody's budget's going to be different. Everybody's plans, every, everything is going to be different. So we're going to use this episode to kind of set out an outline of how you can figure things out on your own. And then we'll finish off with a recommendation at the end of the episode. The so, first, yeah, it'll be like the first steps into earning miles and points for travel. Yeah. So with that being said, Christy does more of the research on which cards we're going to get. And then she'll come to me and then I'm the one who compares it to the budget. So that's how we kind of divide up the work a little bit. So that being said, Christy, if you want to jump into how do you approach it? That being said. That being said. <laughs> That being said, being uh, said. Okay. Being said. <laughs> so how to pick a card. One of the big rules in this whole um, travel points thing is the Chase 524 rule. What does that mean? So Chase, if you have more than five lines of credit opened with anybody, any other credit card, any retail store card, um, any line of credit opened within the last two years, if you have more than five, Chase will not approve you for one of their credit cards. Mm -hmm. So if you know already that you have five or more than five, then don't apply for a Chase card. Yeah, no, you waste other your time. other cards, there's plenty of other cards and they don't have those rules. And so as long as your credit is good, they'll approve you. Um, so that also means that if you don't have five lines of credit open, then you probably want to start with the Chase cards so that way that you don't um, end up not being able to get them later on. I think that's what we did, actually. Right? Yeah, we started with Chase yeah. in order to not get like locked out of Chase. Yeah, we, we didn't we didn't know what we were doing, but we kind of fell into it. And then we found we found <laughs> out about that rule after we had already opened two. And we're like, OK, I guess we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Let's just keep figuring it out. <laughs> Um, one of the things that's important to know when you're looking at different, so the Chase 524 rule, keep that in mind, right? So if you don't have any credit cards open, probably a good idea to start researching the Chase cards off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that you want to consider once you're already a little bit more into the game is if you need miles or if you need points or if you need statement credits, kind of what you need between all of them. Miles are really good for travel. So as far as like flights, Statement credits are really good just for general, and points are really good for, yeah, general travel also. So if you need a hotel, if you need a, a rental car, if you need a flight. Uh, so those are the difference, miles, points, and statement credits. And if you need miles, a good trip, a good tip to try and maximize how many miles you can get is actually to sign up for the frequent flyer mile programs with the different mm -hmm. airlines, because different airlines have different uh, cards specific for those airlines. Right. Those cards offer better benefits, and... If you're signed up for the frequent flyer miles, they may send you a, what's called a targeted offer. So instead of offering you 30,000 miles after you hit your spend, they might offer you 50,000 miles after you hit your spend. But that's specific for you because guess what? You've signed up for the frequent flyer miles. So something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. One more thing with the difference between points, miles, and statement credits okay. is on the points, some of them, um, if they're offering you points, it might be only for hotels. Oh, right, right, Which right, is okay, because right. some cards are, like, hotel-specific. Which we've gotten a few of those. Right, we've gotten a few of those. If you know that you're going somewhere and you want help in covering your stay, your accommodations, yeah, you can get a hotel card and use all those points for hotel cards. So just a quick note on that. The bonus offer is another big thing to consider when you're looking for a card. Bonus offers can vary from card to card and even vary month to month. You know, sometimes there's just a special promotion going on because they want more people to sign up for that card or it's a new card yeah. and they might have a higher bonus offer. And so sometimes it's a high bonus offer, but then you also got to look for, okay, well, what 
is the spend that they're requiring mm -hmm. to get this bonus offer. And I mean, those range, I mean, you can get 50,000 points. Some of them only offer a thousand points because it's a very low spend. And then you can get up to a hundred thousand points yeah. or miles, like we said. So, you know, just kind of look at it, see what's kind of the best bang for your buck, the best offer and what works for you. And so, yeah, with that, that means what is a spend? Like, what are the, what do you mean, like, spend to get the points? Right. So, like, a spend, the easiest way I can describe what a spend is, is the initial offer. Spend X amount of dollars in X amount of months, and you'll get X amount of bonus. Mm -hmm. So, how do normal people say that, right? It's, it'll be something like, if you spend three grand within three months, not three months in a day, right? Not three months in two days, but three months or less you'll get something like 30,000 frequent flyer miles or 50,000 frequent flyer miles. Different cards offer different bonuses, different time frames, different spins. Uh, you just have to keep that in mind. It could even be a tiered spin, you know, spend 3,000 in three months and 10,000 in 12 months and you get different mm -hmm. bonus levels each time. Uh, things that don't count towards a spend though would be like the credit card fee itself. And that's actually oh, something that's we kind of right. skipped over. Uh, but yeah, some cards have credit card fees and, and Christy usually is the one who I don't know, you can go into the credit card fees and how that can get offset sometimes. Okay, so it's true. One, sometimes as part of the bonus or the sign up offer is that they waive the credit card fee for the first year. Right. So so that's great. That means, yeah, you don't have to pay that $75 fee, $100 fee. You know, again, those numbers vary card to card. Some of them, maybe they offer a higher bonus offer, more points, more miles. So maybe you do have to pay that fee so like one of our cards a good example it has it's it's a huge it's a huge fee it's a 450 dollars <laughs> annual fee right uh, but we only have one of those cards and we we use it because it also provides us with 300 dollars statement credit every year mm -hmm. so yes we're paying 450 for the card but we get 300 of it back so really the card has 150 fee uh, why do we like that card well because that's our day-to-day -day card if we're not currently working on a card we stick to it so everybody's different mm -hmm. so you're gonna have to weigh that but keep in mind that that fee doesn't go towards your spend of $3,000 in three months to get a bonus or something like that. Right. So when you're looking at a spend, you need to have a good understanding of what your finances are and what you're spending every month before you commit yourself to a 5,000 in three month card, right? And so the way we do that is we break it down. We break it down to what are what are our monthly expenses. So these are expenses we pay month, once a month like utilities, uh, Netflix, uh, cell phones, insurance, etc. We break down to our weekly spends of what things do we pay for once a week? Fuel, groceries, um, you know, weekend expenditures like eating out, maybe we uh, once a weekend or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, we break that down. And then we also bring, break it down to even the daily expenditures. Uh, and sometimes when you're breaking things down to a daily expenditure, it really helps you to figure out where you're wasting money. So we, I was looking at the statement and realized that I was spending $3 a day at the gas station buying a candy bar or candy bars before I go to work out. Yeah, we cut that out because that, that's ridiculous. Why am I spending almost $100 a month doing that? Mm -hmm. So sometimes just trying to figure out what you're spending money on actually helps you save money in the long run because you get a better idea of where you're wasting. So that's my recommendation to you is to break down monthly, weekly, weekend, and daily. Mm -hmm. Tally it up and then you know what you're spending every month. Don't be comfortable with, oh, heck yeah, I'm spending two grand a month and I'm only making 2100 a month. Hey, if there's some fat that you can cut off, cut the fat off, mm -hmm. but then you have a good idea of what cards you can act realistically hit a spend without getting yourself into trouble. And that's actually something they kind of want to avoid, right? Yeah, your normal routine that you usually do, your spending routine, you don't want to change it for the card. No. You know, whatever you normally spend on, that's what you look at and that's how you choose what you're going to spend because you want the card to work for you, not the other way around. And so, yeah, I mean, like we're going to use our current card for the road trip. Yeah. Our road trip, um, a lot of it, we're going to cover ourselves. Uh, we're not really going to use miles and points because we're driving our own car uh, on this road trip. And then we're booking Airbnbs because it's more dog friendly to book Airbnbs and hotels. Um, and so we opened a brand new card because with all the gas expenses, food, and, you know, ho um, Airbnb stays, we're going to be spending money and we have a budget and that's going to help us meet the spend for this new card. But that card, we're going to turn it around and use it 
to pay for our next trip coming up in Thailand. So always, we're gonna make it work for us. Always thinking <laughs> ahead. So we're gonna use <laughs> we're gonna use travel to get more travel. Yeah. So you can do things like that if it's a planned expense, something that you already have budgeted out, and you know, yeah, you're gonna turn it into more points and miles for future travel. Yeah. And when we say something budgeted out, we mean something that you could pay cash. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by that. So. We're not going into credit card debt to pay for a road trip. We That's have right. the cash set aside and we could pay it all cash, but why not use a card and then pay the balance on the card and then get a bonus or benefit out of the card. Mm -hmm. And so that concept kind of bleeds into, yeah, if you're planning on larger purchases. So an example of how we kind of leverage that pre-planning and hitting a spend would be, uh, there were a couple years in a row where I paid our property taxes with a credit card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, our property taxes were coming due. I told Christy, hey, we need to get a card, you know, in October because I'm going to pay the property taxes in November. So we get a card that had like a $3,000 spend. Property taxes were a little bit more than $3,000. So I just paid the $3,000. I put $3,000 on the card for property taxes. Bam, hit the spend and one purchase done. <laughs> and then I pay the balance on the card. So if you're planning ahead, you can make the card work for you. Mm -hmm. um, a caveat to that, though, is with the paying the taxes... We did pay a fee on that, right? We paid a 2% fee to be able to pay the taxes online with a credit card. And, and sometimes you'll be in, you'll encounter that. Um, you'll have to pay a fee for using a card to pay a bill. As a general rule of thumb, you want to avoid that. You want to avoid paying any kind of fees for using a card unless you're working towards a bonus. Mm -hmm. So if you've already accomplished the bonus for a credit card, and now this is your day-to-day -day credit card, right? You've, you've gotten the one tri trip that you want to do turned out, and now you're like, but I'll always use a credit card just because, yeah, it makes sense to accumulate points and get some benefit out of it. You don't want to pay fees on bills because that 2% fee is basically going to negate any points that you'll get from using that card to pay that bill, right? right? Yeah. It'll negate it unless you're working towards a bonus. So always something to keep in mind. Uh, unless you're working towards a bonus, don't pay fees. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, again, with fees is you want to pay off the balance on time. You yeah. Know, you don't want to yeah. get any late fees. You know, you don't want to take too long to pay and then have to pay interest on whatever it is yeah. that you paid because now you're paying the card for those points. You know, you're paying them for those points because now they're not giving them to you for free. You're paying extra fees. You know, I, I was talking you know. to someone one time actually and I was them, yeah, and I pay my car to pay the balance weekly. And they're like, you can, what? <laughs> yeah, I pay the balance weekly. I'm, what? Like, yeah, I pay the balance yeah, I mean, weekly. We... <laughs> Come on. Like, because a lot of people think you have to pay the balance monthly because you right. get that monthly statement. Mm -hmm. You don't. It's 2019. You can log on. <laughs> you can get on the interwebs and you can go to the credit card's website and you can submit a payment. And if the website isn't allowing you to submit a payment during the statement or the billing cycle, mm -hmm call them. That's what I've done. I've actually picked up the phone and talked to a real life person and said, Hey, I want to give you money, yeah. but your website will not allow me to give you money. <laughs> Please fix that. And yeah. they, and they changed the settings or whatever. And I'm able to pay the balance. Weekly. I mean, we do, we do weekly cause that's what works for us. Yeah. We know by weekly, we're going to get it paid off and not have to pay any extra fees. Mm -hmm. So figure out what works best for you, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, just make sure you pay it off. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think that covers pretty much everything we want to go over today, right? So we've talked about 524, talked about budgeting, mm -hmm. talked about miles and stuff like that. Staying in your budget. Staying in your budget. So it's just the first steps into earning miles and points for travel, getting yeah. you started. There's a little bit more to it, but this will definitely get you going. Mm -hmm. So at the top of the episode, I mentioned that we would probably make a recommendation. And so I'm going to throw it to Christy because, well, I'm going to throw it to Christy in the form of a question because this is the question, how the question usually comes out. And so okay. she's going to give you guys the stock, <laughs> the stock answer. Hey, Christy. So I saw your podcast and it was really good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You guys are so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, why, thank you very much. Why, why, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> So I'm looking at getting card. Which which card specifically would you recommend I get and why? Like, okay. how, how does that work? So if you just want somebody to tell you which card should you get, then I would say get the Chase Sapphire card because okay. it's a small spend. In the average spends, it's $3,000. If you spend $3,000 in three months, you'll mm -hmm. get 50,000 points is their usual bonus. And then those points that you get are very easy to use. They're flexible points. You just go on to Chase. And you say what you want. You go into their travel site, which looks almost like Expedia in a way, mm -hmm. because you can book 
hotels, you can book flights, you can even book like packages, travel packages yeah. with their points. So you can just pick and choose what you want and it's very straightforward on how to use the points. So yeah, it's a good starting point for somebody who's never used a card for travel. I would second that and for additional reasons, right? So the Chase Sapphire, if you're married or maybe you just have a boyfriend, girlfriend, live in, you guys are pretty much married. Uh, one of you can apply for the card hit the spend, mm, yes. and then you can refer a friend. And when you refer a friend, you'll get an extra 5,000 points. With that being said, <laughs> in the show notes, we're going to put our referral link and for would... the Chase Sapphire card. <laughs> so if you, want to, if you want to support us, that would be awesome. Use our referral link. You'll be able to apply for the card. Your friend will get the 5,000, right? And so once your friend gets the 5,000, they get their bonus points. Mm -hmm. And with Chase, you can actually transfer the points to someone who lives in your household. So you can combine those oh, 50 yeah. and 50 to have Again, 100,000. Like we said, there's more stuff to do mm -hmm. and you can get into it. We just wanted to give you a basic start. Yeah. Uh, we're not sponsored by Chase or any of these credit cards that we're talking about. No. Um, so like we said, we're going to put our referral link only because that'll help you earn points and help us earn a little bit more points. Yeah. Um, but we're not getting any monetary benefit or any sponsorship it'd be, from Chase. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a lot cooler if we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with that being said, I think we've pretty much covered everything for the episode. So with that being said, that, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that on a t-shirt. You'll find it in the merch link below. Until then, I hope we see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've been moving along, singing my song, running around, ain't nothing wrong. Ah, 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 the little wrong. Hey, everybody.